Greetings to all of you in the name of Jesus and welcome to Bible in a Year. This is day 358. To God be the glory who has given us the grace to go through this series, Bible in a Year. And we've been doing this for a whole entire year, almost. And it takes <clears throat> patience, it takes dedication, consistency, persistence, intentionality to do something like that. What a big commitment. And I just want to congratulate all of you that are sticking with it and you've been consistent and faithful every single day. We've been reading through the scriptures and we've been learning so much about the word of God. I'm excited about being able to say I have read through the entire Bible <clears throat> this year. What about you? If this is your first time joining us for Bible in a Year, I want to first of all welcome you to the channel, Digital Disciple Ministries, and I want to see if I can get you to make a commitment to the Word of God. Feel free to join us right here where we are with day 358, or you can go back to day number one and start the journey <clears throat> fresh at the beginning come the first of the year. Why not? Uh, learn the discipline, be dedicated, and take your relationship with God to the next level. Now, we've been following a reading plan called Bible in a Year 2020 with Nikki Gumbel. <clears throat> and you can find that reading plan on the YouVersion Bible app. And I've created videos reflections, meditation videos to kind of go along with the reading, to supplement the reading. And it's a great way of learning how to think about the Word of God. We want to definitely learn how to rightly divide the Word because there is so many people walking in error today that don't know how to rightly divide the Word. This skill is essential for the scholar today. So, <clears throat> Let's get into the Word of God. I have a couple scriptures here, <clears throat> not a whole lot, but I want to get into it. And let's begin in Psalms chapter 147. And I'd like to look at verses 4 and 5. Now, as is custom for me to do, I am reading from the King James version of the Bible, but you all can follow along with whatever version you have or whatever version you are most comfortable with. In addition to that, if you're interested in doing a little deeper study, the YouVersion Bible is a great tool to use. I use it all the time. If you've been with me, you've seen me use it, <clears throat> you've watched me use it, and I highly recommend it. I think that it'll be a blessing to you in your studies. So, Psalms. Chapter 147, verses 4 and 5. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding <clears throat> is infinite. I found it very interesting that the Bible says that God calls the stars by their names. Can you imagine, first of all, how many stars there are? God told Abraham that his seed would be as the number of the stars. He said, if you can count the number of the stars, <clears throat> that's how much your seed is going to be. And here, the Bible says, he telleth the number of the stars. Okay, God can number the stars. That shows that, hey, God's understanding, God's knowledge is infinite. God knows a lot of stuff. But the part that really blew my mind is that he says, he calleth them all <clears throat> by their names. So, stars have names. Interesting. I wonder, are stars really what we've been taught they are? Burning balls of gas billions of light years away in the distance off somewhere, <clears throat> and that our sun is the closest star? 
or is there something else to it? Are stars beings? <clears throat> Are stars considered a part of the creation? Do stars have life? Do they have, uh, 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 are they beings with life? Are they alive? Why else would they have names? Now, we are wildly out here speculating, but it looks to me, this is just my personal opinion on the matter, but it looks to me that perhaps stars are beings creations that God has made that have been. I mean, he calls them by name. Maybe they have some form or some degree of life for God to name the stars. Or maybe it's just like the trees. Well, we've named the trees, but God didn't tell Adam to name the trees. God told Adam to name the animals. The animals had life. They had breath in them. So is the Bible showing us that only living things have names aside from places? Or maybe a star is a place and therefore it has a name like Newport News, Virginia, the place where I dwell. So it's possible that stars perhaps are living beings or perhaps stars are just locations that have names like a city. There's a lot to speculate here. What do you think? Do you think that stars are living creatures, living beings? Do you think that they have life? Or do you think that they're just names of places or locations? Do you have any other biblical support to support your idea, your theory, or your thought? Again, we're, we're just speculating. We're thinking about some wild things here, and this is pretty wild. But it's interesting nonetheless. This is the type of Bible talk that can expand your mind. This is the type of stuff that, do people really dwell on these things? <clears throat> do they really meditate? on these concepts and explore these thoughts? Well, I certainly want to. I'm glad that we're able to do that here. Let's slide into Nehemiah uh, chapter number two, and let's look at verse 16. The Bible says, And the rulers knew not whither I went or what I did, neither had I as yet told it to the Jews, nor the priests, nor to the nobles, nor to the rulers, nor to the rest that did the work. Do you know what this looks like? My man, Nehemiah, is moving in silence. Come on. He's moving in silence. No one knows what he's doing. He said, I didn't tell anybody what I was doing. I'm making moves but I'm not telling anybody. He kept them guessing. Well, maybe there's a good reason. Maybe he didn't want intel to get out to the enemies. We know that they had enemies and uh, that these people were not excited about them doing all of this rebuilding and all of this uh, repairing of the walls. So a wonderful lesson here. You don't have to tell everybody your next move. You don't have to tell everybody what you're doing. Not everybody needs to know your business. Sometimes it is appropriate to just move in silence. Pop up on them and just bow here. I did this. People don't need to know all the details of your life. If you're shopping for a house, not everybody might not need to know that detail. Listen. I know with the social media age, a lot of people post every little thing that they do and they kind of uh, catalog their journey. And that's cool to do. I do that too. But there are some things that, you know what? It's okay if you don't tell people on social media what you're doing. It's okay if you don't tell your neighbor what you've been up to lately. 
Don't feel obligated just because Facebook is asking you what's on your mind. It's perfectly fine to move in silence. It's perfectly fine not to let the world know your next move. So keep it silent. Move in silence and then pop up on them with a new car or pop up on them with a college degree. That's all right to do. I see Bible for it. In other case, this was just an interesting example that I pinpointed and I wanted to mention it to you all and share that with you. Drop a comment in the section below. Stir up a conversation. Tell me what you think from today's reading and maybe you got something different out of it. Love to know about it. Love to read about it. And uh, let's see where this conversation can take us. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace. Like this video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. Click that bell so that you can receive notifications and you won't miss anything when we upload videos. That way you'll always know what's going on. And uh, share this with your family and with your friends. It might be that this is the video that can be a blessing to somebody you know. Don't hold on to it. Put it out there in the digital world and watch it float to the place that God has designated. May the grace of our Lord be with you all. Lord have mercy. If I done done somebody wrong, have mercy if you